a kind of interesting case. Does anyone know what it is from this power? I like that benign oma. Uh, Van said that we should call stuff benign omas. Sounds fair. Okay, I see pilomatricoma. I see fibrofolliculoma. I see pilomatrixoma. Same thing as pilomatricoma. I actually prefer the spelling with the X for the sake of how it looks because the X is kind of exotic and cool, but it's actually easier to pronounce pilomatricoma. It flows off the tongue a little easier uh, to me. So I usually actually say pilomatricoma, but I have to say that there's deep love for the X. Or if you want to get old school, yeah, you can call this a calcifying epithelioma of malherbe if you like eponyms, if you're into that sort of thing. So what, um, what helps us tell that this is probably a pilomatricoma um, from low power? Pilomatricomas have several components that can be present in varying amounts. One is sheets of blue basaloid cells, okay? That's what we're seeing right here, these blue basaloid cells. The other thing they have are these sheets of dead cells that are keratinized and they're ghost cells or shadow cells, right? You can actually see where the nuclei used to be from each of these cells. They look like a sheet of keratinocytes that have died suddenly and left behind their, their cytokeratin skeletons. So you can see the outline of each individual cell where it borders with its neighbor. You can see where the nucleus used to be that's totally ghosted out and washed out. And then usually there's kind of these little intermediate cells right here in between where you can see the blue cells transitioning and getting more pink and then their nuclei kind of getting pycnotic and dying away and then it transitions into the ghost cells. So that's the components of pilomatricoma. And then in addition to that, almost always, you're gonna have extensive exuberant reactive infiltrate. Granulomas, giant cells, keratin filled giant cells and granulomas, um, reactive fibroblasts and myofibroblasts, a whole bunch of different inflammatory cells all over the place. And so all of that really brisk infiltrate can get quite busy. And until you're used to this, you can sometimes get real scared by seeing this because some of the giant cells can look kind of weird sometimes. And guess what? You're going to find mitoses in reactive histiocytes and myofibroblasts. So that stuff can, I think, sometimes scare people. Also, because basically the way I think of these is that they grow kind of like a cyst, but then they rupture and break apart. I don't know if that's actually what happens physiologically or uh, biologically in the tumor's development, but they always have this kind of look like they're a cystic structure that's just been burst open and then the whole dermis has reacted against it. Because you know, keratin is a normal, a normal protein made by our body and our body loves keratin as long as it stays the heck in the epithelium where it belongs. As soon as that keratin breaks out of the epithelium and gets down below the basement membrane, the immune system goes berserk and just freaks out and hates it and, and, and makes all this reaction to it. That's why you know, ruptured cysts and hair follicles get this really brisk reactive immune response and scarring and all these things that, that are caused. So it's kind of a strange thing to me that, that keratin, this totally innocuous substance that's so, so essential for, for life basically, really just pisses off the dermis. The dermis and the immune system just can't handle it. They just hate the keratin. All right, so in any case, the, to make a diagnosis of pilomatricoma and, um, I see this, oh, uh, implications of multiple pilometricomas. I will come to that in a second. To make a diagnosis, if I see a fragment of ghost cells with some reaction around it, I'm comfortable saying that's pilometricoma. Um, and sometimes on a biopsy, that's all you'll get. You'll get a shave and you'll just get a little nip of that ghost cell. Or if you want, you can say, I, I think it's suggestive of, but it may not be representative of the whole, the whole, um, the whole spectrum of, uh, or the whole lesion, okay? So that's fine. Um, the, uh, the, but I think that that's pretty helpful to find these ghost cells and recognize that because sometimes it's just little fragments that you might get on a biopsy. The other thing that I'll point out is that a lot of times pilometricomas are totally burned out and all you have are these sheets of ghost cells and the reactive change and you don't have any of the blue basaloid cells. So because of that, I think that sometimes when people first see one like this, that's got nice big sheets of basaloid cells, they get a little freaked out because they're like, ooh, can you have all that? And then once you start looking closer, this is why you don't start at high power, okay? Because if you go to this on high power and you see sheets of round blue cells with one, two, three, three mitoses per high power field, 30 per 10 high power fields, you're gonna call this something malignant. You say malignant round blue cell tumor, right? So the context is everything, okay? 
the, you know, this, I always worry like on cytology, I've never seen a case yet, but all I can imagine is someone puts a needle into this and just gets this area and boy, you go down the tubes real fast. So the, in the context of what everything looks like here, we know that this is totally fine. Mitotic activity is usually present in the basaloid cells and is usually florid, tons of it, tons and tons. And I get cases on a regular basis, people send me and say, well, we're really worried. Is this too much mitotic activity? And the answer is always no, it's okay. If I see a typical mitosis or I see really wildly pleomorphic cells, that is more concerning for the possibility of a malignant pilometricoma or pilometrical carcinoma, matrical carcinoma, whatever name you like. <clears throat> Those are quite rare, but they do happen. And I will say as a, as a, it's not a perfect rule, but as a general tip, if I see something and right away think this looks like pilometricoma, almost always it ends up just being pilometricoma, regardless of mites or anything else. When I've seen pilometrical carcinomas or matrical carcinoma, whatever name you like, those cases usually I look at and I say, ooh, this looks like an ugly carcinoma. And then I start seeing areas of this transition to ghost cell focally or of some trichohyaline granules, those little red blobs, those little red granules you see in the inner root sheath of a normal hair follicle. You can see those sometimes in matrical carcinomas. You can also see them in normal basal cell carcinoma too occasionally. So usually I start at cancer and then after the fact, I realize, oh, there's some matrical component here. We should call this a matrical carcinoma. That's usually how I diagnose malignant pilometricoma or pilometrical carcinoma. Whereas when I look and I say, oh, this looks like an obvious pilometricoma, almost always those end up being benign. Although I'll tell you an exception that I had um, uh, sometime in the past year or so was a patient that had an example of a, of a pre-existing nodule that, uh, that looked like a pilometricoma and then rapidly it grew to like 10 centimeters in size and um, they excised it and within like months and it was infiltrating way down into the fat so even though the actual cells looked just like pilometricoma which was terrifying because on a on a partial biopsy without that history i would have said pilometricoma we're done but in that case i said i think the only way to interpret this is that this must be a a, a pilometricoma that probably was pre-existing and then turned malignant and had explosive uh, growth Okay, so usually pilometricomas are, are thought of as pediatric tumors, but I've seen them in patients of all ages. In fact, the last one I diagnosed, I think was like in a 75 or 80 year old, um, like a month ago. I saw one or a few weeks ago. So it can totally happen um, in any age and they can be quite big. I saw one um, on the elbow of, um, I don't know, maybe a 60 something year old that was like six centimeters, violaceous nodule, came into our orthopedic oncologist. They thought it was gonna be a sarcoma. Re resected it, looked perfect for pilometricoma, perfectly circumscribed, no atypical mites, no pleomorphism, and years later, no problems, no recurrences. So um, this is a good tumor to know about because there are things about it that can really scare you that you need to learn to be comfortable with that kind of breaks the rules of what we accept in most, in most tumors. All right. And you know, remember, the reason these have mites is because these are recapitulating the germinative cells of the hair bulb of a growing hair follicle. If you go look at the blue basaloid cells in the root of a big deep hair follicle, they're gonna look just like this and they're gonna have mitoses because that's what they're doing. They're growing, they're dividing, okay?